Stand for the pledge, please. The pledge allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone to Monday, June 6th. If you have any questions, business, comments, come up to the microphone, give us your name and address, and state your business with us, please. Call the roll. Cedar? Here. Foley? Here. Kinsfatter? Here. Kleeman? Here. Cuffa? Here. Report? Here. McCartney? Here. All present, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Well, number four, consent agenda A, City Council minutes of May 16th, 2016, regular meeting, recommendation approve. B is the cemetery trustee minutes of 3 one Recommendation received. Seize the planning commission minutes of 4 13 16. Recommendation received. Deeds the historical commission minutes of 4 14 16. Recommendation received. Harbor commission minutes is E 5 21 16. Recommendation received. And F is the resignation from the historical commission, except with regrets. Motion to approve A through F as presented, Your Honor. Support. All right, the motion is made to support any questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I would like to make sure that we send a nice letter to Fred Arnold. He has served on the Historical Commission uh, 18 years. Can we make sure we send him? Uh, and maybe we should give him like a little certificate. Can that be in order, Mr. Freehand? Certainly. Yeah. Can we put that in the works? Okay. All right. All right. We will go to number five then. Resolution number 1607, adoption of the 1617 fiscal year budget, millage, levy, and appropriation acts. Mr. Booth. Okay, your honor, included in your packets uh, in council is a resolution to approve the 2016-17 annual budget for the city of St. Clair. The budget maintains the city's operating millage rate at 13.0581. The uh, general fund is balanced with revenues and expenditures at $3,553,541. This is a uh, slight decrease. It uh, decreased $883 when compared to uh, our prior year budget. And um, I ask for council's approval to, uh, of the resolution. I'd move to approve the resolution. Support. Support. All right, the motion has been made in support. Is there any questions? Anybody in the audience with a question? All right, call the roll, please. Kids Potter? Yes. Cleveland? Yes. Kappa? Yes. Report? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Foley? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Resolution adopted. Thank you. We'll go to number six, Port Administration, Mr. Booth. Uh, nothing uh, this evening, Your Honor. Any questions from Mr. Booth tonight? All right. Mr. Downey, do you have anything? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. All right. See you, City Departments, anybody? Can I backtrack to Booth, please? Sir. Sure. Um, Mike, we were, I think, going to hear on that, um, the grant that we, we had, but we didn't spend. I'm the, sorry. The crushed-up tire grant. Crushed up tire grant. Scrap tire grant. Well, yes. Um, that will be a little bit later in the, um, uh, let's see, under new business uh, approval for the row professional. Um, I'll give you an update at that point. We have the one that we currently have. And then we have one that we reapplied for. It's kind of on hold, yeah. It's still on hold. Okay, that's all. Right. Unfortunately. Thanks. I'd like to have them both together. Right. All right, anybody else? All right, we'll go to D, authorities, boards, commission departments. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. She was on her way. Oops. Um, I just have to formally offer advertising on the new shuttle van. If any business in the city of St. Clair or anywhere else where would like to advertise, we will be doing it on the windows of the new shuttle van. And they can contact me at the Harbor at 810-329-4125, or they can go to our website, stclairboatharbor.com, if they are interested. Did you say business or businesses? We have multiple spots, so. Multiple, multiple windows? Multiple businesses, yeah. I'm, we're just going to set it up as a first come, first serve, if anyone's interested. Um, the second thing is that I needed to announce that the launch is not going to be reversed like we originally planned after we did the personal watercraft installation. And that's it. 
How's that working out? Leaving it the way it is. It's yeah. been fine. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. All right. Now we'll go to D. Any boards, commissions, committee chairs, council reps? Yeah, I got one, Bill. The historic uh, commission is having our annual program next Thursday, uh, the 17th, or Thursday the 16th, Friday the 17th. And the topic this month is going to be the Diamond Crystal Salt History. And it's going to be put on by Mary Boda and Bev Stewart, uh, two previous uh, Diamond Crystal employees. And that's Thursday the 16th at 7 and Friday the 17th at 1 o'clock down at the community center. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, let's go to number seven. Do we have any unfinished business tonight? Yeah, I have one, Bill. I'd like to make the motion that I renew the motion to purchase the property at 16, 19, 91, 16 Cedar Street and donate it to Habitat of Manity. I'll second your motion, Mr. Clayton. <coughs> What, okay, what's that address? Can somebody give me Nine, that address? Uh, 916 Cedar Street. 916. Okay, so the motions. Would you say the motion again, please? Uh, I renew the motion to purchase the property at 916 Cedar Street and to donate it to Habitat for Humanity. And it's been supported by Member McCartney. All right, the motion's been made by Member Cleman and supported by Member McCartney. Is there any discussion? Questions? I have do have one question. Did the city receive a donation to purchase this land? I'm sorry? Did the city receive a donation to cover the cost? Cost of? Buying the property. The, um, per legal's direction, the check has been mailed back and pending t tonight's, um, what happens t at tonight's meeting. Uh, the property needs to be uh, purchased by um, the 15th of June. Right. Any other discussion? Is, is it, can it be one motion or does it have to be two? It's a the motion to renew is a single motion. Uh, it's a it's a uh, uh, resuscitation of the motion made on May second. Anybody else? Anybody from the audience? Anything? Give us your name and address, please. Hi. Is that good? Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Gabe Elgar of All I live next door to the property in question. Uh, and my parents couldn't make it tonight at a prior engagement with my brother, but I'm representing the family. Um, so I'd like to kind of pose the question of who is the city council representing? Uh, because if you're representing the residents of St. Clair, it seems logical that we would give strong consideration to the adjacent landowners and taxpayers. All five property owners are opposed to the city's plan to convey ownership of the subject lot to Habitat for Humanity. And we're all pretty confused about how Councilman Kleeman, supposedly our rep, can so strongly support this move without even asking for input from us. We have submitted a signed and notarized statement of our opposition to this plan to the city manager. And again, all adjacent landowners are opposed to this plan. That's Jim and Sue Anderson, 30-year residents. My parents, Hisham and Christine Algarabali, 24-year residents and Doug Dobney, who just made massive improvements to the neighborhood by uh, fixing up a rundown house. So who, who's the council representing here? I am. Are, are you representing me? Are you the third ward? Yeah. Yes, I am. Me it, and Mr. King's father. It doesn't seem like you're representing our interests. Pardon me? It doesn't seem like you're representing our interests, and I, I do have a few more thoughts here, if you don't mind. But continue. Uh, the next thing I'd like to address is the word local, and it's a word that I, I heard a lot when I listened back to the meeting, uh, the, the last meeting. Uh, we need to consider the local element in our decisions. And uh, in this case, we don't seem very concerned with the local element because all of the adjacent landowners are against this move, yet it's somehow being pushed forward. Um, and the idea that the council will consider conveying land to an entity that is not local and does not pay city taxes instead of allowing the private market to take its natural course does seem out of touch when you have two of the three families that, have, that own land there, they're interested in buying that land. So there's, there's no void here, there's, there's no place for the city to step in. Government involvement really isn't necessary. 
I've also got a few quotes from the last meeting. Um, one, uh, what happened to that property doesn't matter to me. That's on the CTV website, 3840 into the meeting. For the people in, the, in my neighborhood, my family, my neighbors, it, it does matter. It's important to us what happens to this property. And I'm, I, I'm a little bit surprised that that statement would even be made. Um, and then another one, isn't the city better off with a house on that property rather than just another lot split? Councilman Kinsvader pointed out 30 seconds after that statement that the council had just approved three lot splits two minutes before this discussion, so that does seem fairly selective. Um, and then another point is who, who's to say that another home wouldn't be built through the private sector? And who's to say that that home wouldn't have a higher taxable value than the home built by Habitat for Humanity? Um, and then this brings me to the word materiality. Now, the, the argument that, that the city would be better off with a house on that property uh, doesn't really seem to be relevant. Materiality is the quality of being relevant or significant. And the difference in taxable value between a vacant 65-foot lot and a 65-foot lot with a home on it is 0 .0005 or 5 ten thousandths of the city's gross taxable value. Are you really going to suggest that this should be an offset to the wishes of all the adjacent taxpayers? I, I don't really see any consistency here. How, how can you lot splits be approved unanimously one second and then the next second it's different in this specific instance? How can you possibly feel comfortable casting aside the interests of the adjacent landowners for clearly an immaterial top line impact? We would sincerely appreciate you reconsidering a public conveyance of the subject lot to Habitat for Humanity. This is not some linchpin type of property that will, that will propel the city into the future, but as I said, it's important to the people that live near it and it matters to us. As is the case with most situations like this, allow the property to run its course through the mechanism already in place with the county. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, you had some questions up there that, and some comments that you made, and I think that some of them deserve an answer. Yeah. I made the comment about the lot split. That property was never discussed about a lot split. It was brought up in a motion to buy it on, on, and back taxes. Right. So the lot splits that Mr. Kinsfather alluded to had nothing to do with this what? piece of property. They were already owned by the individuals. How house is never going to be built on that lot? Well, I'm addressing the question about the lot split. But the, so, the lots that you're splitting. So the reason it came up for, um, for council to buy it was because a motion was made from a council member to purchase the land and donate it. <clears throat> That's, that was our right to do so under the tax foreclosure, what the city has first right of refusal. We can argue the semantics all night long, it doesn't matter. The city has first right to the property. If the city didn't want the property, which happens 10 times out of 10 in most cases, then it goes back to the property owner, or it goes back to an auction. So at this case, it didn't. It was a motion was made to donate it to Habitat. Um, it was pretty simple. It was a very simple motion. There was nothing wrong with the motion. There was nothing in that motion that was begrudging to a property owner. It was a clean motion with good intent. And I stand by my motion. I stand by my, conduct, my comments. Thank you, Mr. Garbargo. I'm going to open this up to if anybody else has anything. Anybody else have any questions or comments they want to add to this? Yes, Jeff McLeod, 1022 South 10th in the neighborhood. Uh, the one question I have coming up about this is how much is this costing the city as opposed to how much the city would take in if it did take a natural course and go to auction or get split or whatever and the taxes come in? You are spending money of the city, which is paid for by the taxpayers. How much, what is the actual profit for the city? This city is not necessarily in the business of uh, contributing money to uh, charities, not normally. You're supposed to be taking care of the people in this town. And how, what is the actual numbers the city will gain either way or lose either way? Do you have that? No, we don't have those numbers, no, Jeff. Are we, or would we get more money if it were divided up and they were paying more taxes on it? Or is it going to be more profitable for the Habitat House? Are they going to be paying taxes? I understand the question. I don't have the numbers. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else?
Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Moore. I live at 612 Clinton. I'm not in the uh, proximity of the property, but what I would like to know, if, if the city decides to go this route and buy vacant land or buy property, is it something that they look to continue to do with Habitat in the future? Because uh, I invest in properties, I, I rehab homes, and this is kind of competition for me. Um, and it, but I, I am a big supporter of, of Habitat Humanity. They, they do great work. I just don't know as, as an investor, as a property investor, if this is the type of competition that I want as a resident of the city of St. Clair. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll ask if you have anything new, if it's just going to be, you know, I don't want to say the same thing, but if you have something new to add, please come on up. If not, I'm going to ask for the roll call. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask, Annette, would you add, read that motion back to us, please? <coughs> motion to renew the motion to purchase the property at 916 Cedar and donate to Habitat for Humanity. All right. I'm going to ask you to call the roll. Lehman? Yes. Kuffa? No. Laporte? No. McCartney? Yes. Foley? Yes. Kinspotter? No. Cedar? No. Motion fails. All right. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for their courtesy and their input. We'll go to New Business 8, Special Events from the Beer and Wine Festival. Chief, you out there? Beer and Wine Festival. Yeah. <clears throat> I have two uh, requests here tonight, Your Honor. I'm in receipt for a request for approval of the special events, the Ultimate Fund Productions, and the Social Connection partnering with the St. Clair Chamber of Commerce. Is requesting approval to host their second annual St. Clair Beer and Wine Festival that will be held on Friday, August the 5th from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. in the Plaza Park. They have all the necessary documents been received and in compliance with the city ordinance. I respectfully recommend approval of this event. Motion to approve. Support. Support. All right, motion based support questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Special event permit Wellington Financial Client Appreciation Event. Yes, Your Honor, uh, this is their annual appreciation, client appreciation that is scheduled for August 20th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at their location of 302 Thornapple. Uh, they also uh, request to have a couple of the roads shut down barricades that they do every year. Uh, they have all the, also the necessary documents and they're in compliance with the city ordinance, and I respectfully request approval of this event. Motion to approve. Support. All right, motion may support. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, we'll go to C. Uh, Mr. Freehand is here tonight for a letter of consent for the Network to Freedom application. Do you want to touch on this a little bit, Bob? Or? This is Bob Freehand from our Historical Commu Museum uh, Commission. Mayor, members of the council, you have, I think you have received a copy of the letter. Uh, what we're requesting is that the, uh, that the, the uh, council approve Hillside Cemetery to be uh, approved as a site for um, listing at the National Park Service Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. And um, the primary reason for that is that there are four people buried in Hillside Seminary, Cemetery who were heavily involved in the Underground Railroad. And uh, we've requested that the cemetery, as you as owners of the cemetery, give approval that it be listed so that in the National Park Service, their listing of sites that are, that are involved with the Underground Railroad be uh, as part of that database. There's a lot of research that is going on right now uh, about the Underground Railroad and people that were involved in it. And the four people that were involved in it in, from this community and the adjacent community, there was Melinda Paris and her husband, William Paris. They were actually freed slaves. They moved in a number of, a number of areas, including in Canada, and eventually settled in St. Clair working for uh, Simeon Brown at the Brown Hotel. 
and they are buried in Hillside Cemetery. We have oral tradition that they were actively involved. They were, they were African Americans, uh, that they were actively involved in helping other people to cross over into Canada. Uh, there's no written documentation, uh, but there is a good oral tradition. They lived uh, in property, uh, the back corner at Vine and 9th Street was the house. And uh, they worked for many years for uh, Simeon Brown at the Brown Hotel. And that was from, from 18, about 1850 on through 1868. Uh, so they were actively involved. There was another couple who are buried in Hillside Cemetery, uh, Martha and uh, John Donahue. And they are actually from East China, but they had a farm right at Recorp Point, which is now uh, where, where the DTE has their plant. So what we look at, what the Network of Freedom looked at, looks at is are there opportunities to designate sites and these two sites in Hillside Cemetery, the Historical Commission actually paid for plaques. So there are plaques on both of these two burial sites in Hillside Cemetery, designating them as significant in the, under, in the work of the Underground Railroad. We uh, need to, once we found out this information, uh, that the National Park Service had this Network to Freedom proposal, uh, we, we agreed that we as a commission would support an application, but in order for us to submit an application, we need the consent of the city because you are the owners of the property. What this will mean is that this, the cemetery then becomes part of a research site. So people actually would come here who are doing research on the, uh, on the Underground Railroad and the most likely thing that they would be doing would be to, uh, to view the, the plaques themselves and uh, other information that we, we have gathered. So the museum itself would be a research point for them as well as the cemetery. That's fascinating, that's pretty interesting. I think we're pretty much in favor of this, aren't we, fellas? I'd make a motion to approve the I'll support letter. Of the motion is made to support questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we'll go to D, approved proposal from Rowe Professional Service Company for scrap tire grant project services, Mr. Booth. Okay, the city has uh, received uh, confirmation from Ace Asphalt of Port Huron that they will supply materials to uh, complete the scrap tire uh, work that, we've, uh, that we'd like to bid out. Uh, tonight I'm asking for council's approval to move forward with the bid design process. Uh, in your packet from Rowe, you have a, uh, a proposal for them to to do the work. And this would uh, repave uh, Truon Street from Glen Eagles to St. Andrews and Vine Street from Kearney to Cox Road. Um, thought on Truon is uh, if we finish that stretch of the road, we can then start feeding off from that. Uh, Glen Eagles is in, in poor condition, uh, the highlands and, and that. So if we, if we start that base road, I think then we can feed back off of it. Um, I did confirm with Roe that the um, if the bid comes in high, we do reject it. That they, they will only bid us for, or excuse me, bill us for um, whatever portion of the design that's required to put the bid packet together. Is Truon a local and Vine major? Yes, Truon is local and Vine is major. And uh, the major streets, um, as of our last audit, had four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars available, and the local streets had two hundred sixty-three thousand. So we I'd do have funding available. I make a motion to approve the. The proposal. I support. All right, the motions were made in support. Is there any questions? Yeah, I have one, Bill. Will these uh, will be doing the testing, patching, testing, concrete, breakage? They'll be like doing that. the um, all, all the design and all the all of the um, construction piece of it. Yeah. So they'll be doing the, yes the test. <coughs> the results. I'm sorry. The rate comes in. Uh, typically, our engineering costs are about twenty. If you look at the rate. Um, or the amount they're looking to charge us, the twenty-five thousand nine hundred sixty dollars. It's it's closer to ten percent. So, does it need? Does I think it it's fair work, and they've done work for us before and done. I, I thought <coughs> quality work. So, does AEW do this, Mike? Yeah. They have not been involved in uh, scrap tire. Um, okay. That's why we went with Rail. They they approached us, I guess you'd say. Anybody else? Call the roll, please. Papa? Yes. 
Laporte? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Foley? Yes. Kinsvater? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Carrie Drowner? All right, thank you. Let's go to number nine, claims and accounts May 20th, May 27th, 2016. Any questions? Hearing no questions, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve as presented. Support. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Number 10 is public comment, public questions. If anybody has anything come up, give us your name and address. We'll give you about like three minutes or so and then just tell us what you, what's on your mind. Mayor? Yes. I just need um, to add something to the beer and wine festival application. Uh, last year, they requested to have banners at the boardwalk rail and they're going to request that again. Um, do you recall the banners were three by eight? hung at the boardwalk and they are requesting to have them up um, June 23rd to June 27th during the art fair and July 3rd to July 5th during 4th of July. They want them up during 4th of July? Correct. Did we do that last year? Yes. Did we allow it? Uh, yes. Did they do glory last year too? They did not. Well, they didn't get approval through council for that. So <coughs> we did it they trial contacted days. River Fest or not. So they would, it would be um, temporary sign permits through the building department. What did the, what's those dates again they want them up there? Uh, June 23rd to 27th and July 3rd to July 5th. It's an extra day to take up and take down. You guys all know my opinion on it. It sets a precedent. We did, but we did it last year, right? Yes, we right. did. We already set the press. I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll support that. All right, motion made to support questions. Better call the roll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Laporte? No. McCartney? No. Foley? Do we do we have permits applied for? I mean, are we they're actually they applied for permits and we're voting on this or you think they're applying for permits and we're voting on this? They are requesting the permit. I spoke with the building department and he showed me the permits that were issued last year. So I said I would bring it to council um, so there's been no for, for your advice. So um, it was a discussion last year. So I mean, who, who puts them up? Who takes them down? They do. They do. They do. I'll vote yes. Ken Spotter? Yes. Kleeman? No. Kuffa? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Carrie? All right, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Uh, any other public comment? All right, let's go to number 11, Mayor and Council comments and announcements. I will not be at the next meeting. I will be out of town. So. Will be noted. Noted. All right, then we'll go to number 12. I'm going to ask for a motion to close session to discuss strategy connected with negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement with employees represented by ASME and with employees represented by the Police Officers Labor Council, POLC. So moved. Support. All right, motion made to support it. Call the roll, please. McCartney? Yes. Mm -hmm. Foley? Yes. Ken Spotter? Yes. Seaman? Yes. Kaffa? Yes. Report? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Carrie Thank you. You are welcome to stay. We're going to be in there for a while. We'll come out. I don't think we're going to do anything when we come back, take any action, but you're certainly welcome to stay and enjoy the ambience of the building. Other than that, have a safe trip home. <laughs>